again. Welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And I hope you're enjoying this wonderful summer weather. I know, it's great. This has been a really, really good summer. I mean, I mean, so f- worse. We could have like locusts and like <laughs> no, no. Oh my God, I did read an article that said some someone got the bubonic plague in China and I was like, oh, oh no, God. not that no, next. I saw a thing this morning, I forget where, it was real. There was some mall in like, Oklahoma or something, there were like massive amounts of these black crows. Like, I'm talking, and you're just like, it was like the birds, the movie. It was crazy. I'm like, nothing surprises me. I, I tell people that. Just no. You know what? And, and maybe we can start with this just to sort of frame things for this episode. Is I was watching a documentary yesterday and it was showing Silly. something from like the 50s, yeah. right? And it was just people up in arms and you saw uh, people complaining about police brutality. It was Same marches so. on the streets yeah. of New York City. And you just realize, you know what, Things guys? Don't change. This, you know, this is life. People should get off social media. We should stop arguing and fighting about stuff. Yep. People should internalize, be like, what am I doing in my life? How's my life going? What can I do to make my life yep. better? And stop worrying well, so it, much about everything I else. do. I, I think we're driving ourselves I do. Insane. I think there, I, and I kind of do blame, I mean, I'm on social media. Don't get me wrong. I get it. It's a great communication tool if, if that's all you were doing, but it is... It does seem over the years, the more social media we've, uh, you know, acquired, the less people are able to just communicate like normal human beings. Well, I think. Or not take everything so personally. personally. You know, like if you, first of all, the typed word does not offer the same expression as the spoken word. I could type you an email, a strongly worded email, or I could have a conversation with you. I'm guessing that the conversation will probably be more impassioned than the email. Might not be as perfectly written, you know. You have, but I think. But hearing I think people things are is, less rude in person. Like oftentimes, I mean, people have said things to me on Facebook, on social media, over the course of the past few months, where I was like, "You would never right. say that to me to my face." And right. you know, so I feel like on the one hand, it sort of gives people an excuse for bad behavior. Yeah. Um, but it's also just, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's several things. One is, um, I, I just started reading this book called, uh, the elephant in the room and mm-hmm. it actually talks about how, you know, I mean, face it guys, we're just, you know, sophisticated monkeys <laughs> <laughs> and that, you know, that, that sort of tribalism and that sort of yes. competition and that sort of is, is very innate in, in, in our it's just DNA. Our, it is it's, just the way we are. It's literally our nature, yeah. right? But then I also think that, you know, that th- there are parties, meaning politics, meaning people with vested interest, always follow the money, yeah. who who are benefiting from this, this sort mental, of yes. this, this sort of clashing mentality. And I saw a really good example yesterday. Um, I, I follow representus.us on Facebook and it's a nonpartisan group that sort of, you know, much like I try to do, sort of tries to point things out like, hey, just look at this, isn't this weird without being like, oh, you gotta hate these people or love these people or anything, right? And it was a little, um, it was a comparison of money donated by billionaires Mm -hmm. to the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. And I was actually shocked to see that there is way, way more money from billionaires to Democrats. that goes to Democrats, right. then goes to Republicans. So most of the money that comes into the Democratic side from billionaires and large corporations. Right. For the- but everyone has this sort of impression that, that oh, you know, the the Republicans are the croniest capitalists, exactly. you know, the fat cats and everything. And, 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 and I was like, but it- that's not actually true right. at all if you look at the facts. And, and it's s- been that way for a long time. And I mean. I mean, we see it in a lot of things where there's, it, it is kind of, it's not really hypocrisy, but it's bizarrely not accurate. I mean, it is hypocrisy, especially <laughs> like if you're lying about it or you're framing things in a certain way while, you know, you're saying, oh, these people are bad, but you're backdooring well, all I your was, donations from I them. Read that some, is, that's, that's I read wrong. something um, yesterday. It was Eddie Edwards, conservative black man. Shouldn't matter what color his skin is, but he'll even say, I'm a conservative black man who, you know, was treated poorly by the executive council, was never given a hearing. Like, it's just odd. And um, uh, 
executive counselor, Deb Pignatelli, who's a Democrat, went after and said, oh, he wasn't qualified. You know, like, he just wasn't, he wasn't a good fit for the job. Well, how do you know? He wrote back to her and he said, you obviously did not read my resume. Right. And did not give me a hearing to explain why I was a good fit for the job. You just outward dismissed me. And, and she apparently must have made some sort of, you know, comment that, well, she supported, um, black women for positions or whatever. So then Eddie was saying like, why are you trying to drive a wedge between black men and black women? Why is there this constant separating everybody into pitting groups against each other? Why couldn't you just take me as an individual? So here's what I think, right? It's the more you pit people against each other, the more divisive it yeah. is, the more engaged people are. So if you see how angry, people are right now mm. and just like and, and and frankly a little ugly yes. I mean, it's, it's getting to a stage where i'm just like uh can we stop with the name calling name calling can is we... my first discount like if once you throw out an, an actual derogatory name i'm like I, I, your opinion and, means and, less and to also me. where it's like personally directed yeah. that's you know? what i mean not just saying and those fools or something right. but when you're I mean, like I, I did i did last week say people are morons i stand right. by that's that a statement broad, but that's a broad <laughs> one you're not looking at Yes. An individual no, I'm not and saying, saying Kemi you is are a moron. moron you know, not, she's not. <laughs> no, but I know what you mean. Don't call right. me specifically yeah. a moron. Right. Say people are morons. Right. That's just a mindset. So, so the other thing that I just recently discovered um, is, I guess in 2013, and maybe we've mentioned this on a show in the past, they changed uh, how the U.S. government was allowed to deal with propaganda. So there was mm. a bill called the Smith Munt Act, which mm. um, in 2013 actually got repealed and that bill used to make it illegal for the u.s government to use propaganda against its own citizens <laughs> and i'm like from 2013 <laughs> to now seems to me, like to social blown. media has gotten like very divisive it's designed to sort of pit us against each other you know you hear these comparisons to the civil war where yeah. it was brother against brother and father against son and I mean, if you look at my Facebook feed, it almost feels, it feels that right. way at this stage. And so I just want to tell everyone, let's take a chill pill. Let's actually look at internalizing. Go back to your own life. Right. Just go back to who you are and be like, am I healthy? If I'm not entirely healthy, Maybe I should what try. can I do to change right. it? You know, Tammy and I have both been working really hard. And I understand we're getting older. So like <laughs> you start to think about those things. Yeah. But it's also, it's, it's kind of like... I mean, I've sort of seen where the world is heading and I'm like, I don't want to put any burden or onus on society. And by way of example, I don't know if you followed this on, on my Facebook, but like I made a Oh, you made a I comment thought, and people I just thought it was it. like I thought it was kind of just cheeky and sort of like but I was also genuinely trying to point out this sort of hypocrisy because and so this the statement was um, if you want me to wear a mask then I want you, if you to lose. It's not even want. If I'm going to demand you wear a mask. Right. Because there's a difference between I would like you to do something and I demand you do something. Right. And and then, of course, after the demand comes the sort of enforcement thing, yes. right? So once they write a law where it's a mandatory mask law, now you're actually making it so that the police have to go enforce it. And don't tell me do. I'm exaggerating because at Planet Fitness in Nashua, New Hampshire, the police now sit outside the gym to make sure you're wearing a mask before there's you no go crime. to work There's no out. actual crime in Nashua. So, so, you know, that's the problem. So anyway, so the post I made was, I was like, if you want, no, and I said, you know, it wasn't even a demand. I was like, if you want me to wear a mask, yeah. then I want you to lose weight, get eight hours of sleep and eat right. Right. Are you ready, Karen? That's probably why, right? So I was being cheeky. I'm true. entirely willing to admit that. The vitriol that came I back, saw. and I was like, okay, but wait a second. So people who say we should wear masks, um, and a lot of those people I understand are immune compromised, but a lot it. of a lot of the people for whom this virus is the most deadly have health and issues that are self-inflicted chronic diseases being overweight like yeah. i was two years ago i lost 65 right. I pounds i could still because... lose 20 pounds and probably st i mean right now i feel like i've you know i feel much better than i did you know six months ago or a year ago 
But I bet if I look on a um, chart, I probably still have to lose 20 more pounds. I mean, I don't think that's realistic in my life, but it does make a huge difference when you lose weight. And I it mean, changes a huge your health difference. Completely. It changed my immune response to yeah. allergies, it, to food, to all these things. And those were choices I took and implemented in my own yeah. life, and you took and implemented in your own life to make your unit better right so i'm like look guys if if we're all in this together Let's all and you're making it. demands on me then i'm gonna start making demands on you right and you're not gonna like it so maybe stop making so many demands well, right. on the rest of right. us that's all i want live and let live you take care of you i take care of me so you had a well i had article. an article <laughs> well no i did i th i'm making notes about all sorts of things but um so Every, every day, pretty much, on social media, you know, somebody posts some piece of data. There's two things. People post some data, and people just post whatever. <laughs> like, not me. And I, I'm one of, my personality is not necessarily to challenge to be difficult, just to challenge to say, to make people stop and think. Right. You know, what are you basing that on? If you're telling me, because last week the big talk was the surge, we have to, everybody should wear masks, not because here's the data on why I think you should wear mm -hmm. masks. Everybody should wear masks because we've had this surge over the last 30 days in New Hampshire. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. And, and just but to they, clarify they for people watching, the surge isn't a surge in deaths. In fact, deaths are going down. down. The surge is just because we've increased testing. And it turns out there are a lot of people who have this virus or a corona similar virus, depending on how you're looking at the testing. So, you know, when you hear that, you know, and when and if you are still listening to mainstream news, which you should not be you should doing, take less of. you know, just Make take it in healthier. less. I mean, that's sort of part of the toxicity yeah. well, like it's we, all day 24 7 when we went to 24 7 news think about it people started getting crazy then right and it's fear-mongering and and the other thing that folks need to remember is like the mainstream media and the people reporting on this stuff don't care about you what they care about is making their profits and the way they make profits is one by pitting people against each other two creating conflict and three creating a, a fear-mongering based group so that you're just sort of sucked into this world so when you hear things like there's this massive surge um just keep that in mind it's not that more people are dying it's just that more people are being diagnosed and in fact one may argue that because we're seeing those numbers it actually means that um this is much much less deadly than originally yeah thought. dan and i dan keeps talking I, apparently the who I mean, I has not actually said that the virus is aerosolized which I thought we had, but I had, but wow. if it, and I, so then I, you know, I'm not a dumb person, but Dan's significantly smarter than me. So I said, oh, well, wait a minute. I thought we already thought it was aerosolized. And he said, no, they're saying it's droplets. And I'm like, okay, well, what is, and then, he, then I doubt myself. So what's the difference? So he said, well, if it was, if it is aerosolized, meaning it's teeny tiny particles everywhere. So they just by breathing, just by breathing, the reality is that that would make it more like the measles. Okay. Except for the reality would be that anybody who has gone to any store at all has been exposed to this because it would just be there, even with a mask on, because the masks can't stop those itty bitty particles. Right. So how much, how many Americans, how many New Hampshire residents have already been exposed and or had this and it didn't have any impact? So because I like to see actual like an actual thing as opposed to hyperbole. Um, Ron Paul, former congressman from Texas, who is a medical doctor, it's important to remember, this is coming from a medical doctor, um, had an article this week. Um, apparently on July 2nd, Texas Governor Greg Abbott uh, issued an executive order mandating the wearing of masks across the state because of this spike. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip through. It says, uh, Collin County... And I'm not sure where Collin County in Texas is, but it's relevant. Collin County Judge Chris Hill blew the whistle on what appeared to be a move in mid-May that redefined what a COVID case was um, to match the mainstream media line that a second wave was on the way. Mm -hmm. in, a um, in a commissioner's court hearing for the Collin County on May 18th, it was revealed that while previously the determination of a COVID case because that's the number you're hearing about, is all these new cases, mm -hmm. was a confirmed COVID test result. That's what I always thought. 
The definition was suddenly changed to count probable cases as cases. At the same time, the threshold for determining what probable was, was lowered to a ridiculous level. Judge Hill said at that meeting, if you have subjective fever and you have a headache and you live in Collin County, you now meet the qualifications to be a probable COVID patient. Even worse, once you're a probable case is determined based on the possibility of unrelated subjective criteria, up to 15 people in possible contact with that probable case are, are also listed as probable cases. So we went from in Texas counting in May actual positive COVID tests to an actual patient to actual people who tested positive 15. to people who might have similar symptoms but not necessarily tested positive, not necessarily even tested, and then 15 people surrounding them. So this is why there probably is a spike in Texas to, because we are no, the number, you're comparing apples to barrels of apples. Right. We're, did, did I ever tell you that I got this phone call? I still have a 917 cell phone number from my New York days, mm. you know, 15 years ago. And I got a call at very early in this whole thing, maybe March, maybe early April, because mm. it was on the way to yeah. the first reopen rally. And um, it was a push call from the Department of Health and Human Services of New York City. And so it was a voicemail that had been generated by them to everyone, I guess, in, in New York City, New York State, I'm not quite sure about that part, which basically said, and this was in spring at the start of, you know, at allergy point, season, right. if, if you have a fever, a cough, a sore throat, or are blowing your nose, you may have COVID. Or allergies. And I was like, wow, like how terrifying right. like like i feel like if if we're in this medical emergency then you're not looking for patients you're just trying to deal with whatever is being thrown at you which from the start made me extremely skeptical mm. about what exactly was going on right and and one of the things no one wants to talk about is you know the comorbidities and yep. and the fact that a lot of the people sadly who are passing away first of all are elderly you know right. like your time comes i mean i i understand they're vulnerable i think we could have done a lot better in the long term yes. uh, nursing homes and all of that and i do think the treatments change i mean i think we I and, think and we, that's how it should be right you the way, we, the and way we, i mean that the whole intubation concept the whole ventilator thing they're kind of like maybe oh, that, that was really a, bad oh but that was work. A, but that was a but they didn't understand the blood clotting right. thing like so they was were actually part. probably causing more you know, you know they were but actually. they didn't know so so there are you know i mean certainly in new york uh state itself which you know if you're still living there i don't know why i left there <laughs> like <out>. decades ago <laughs> um i mean that's partly why i got out because i i was like oh you know if we're gonna move towards this totalitarian tyranny based society which is what i believe is busy happening and certainly in my book which you ordered the ecstatic pessimist came now the, available in, on amazon. amazon yesterday uh you know there are essays just over the 12 years in new hampshire where i talk about oh look where we had this first lockdown and it was like this very isolated thing and from there because people didn't push back on their rights and said hey is this like are, are you actually allowed to suspend the mm -hmm. constitution because you feel this will make your job easier? Oh, okay, I guess you are. <laughs> then, um, you know, th it's gone from, you know, like a school lockdown to a, yeah, a street lockdown, neighborhood, and something. now we're at a, you know, statewide lockdown. And I won't be surprised if, you know, if we see before the November election some kind of federal national yeah. lockdown. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> I um, hope not. I hope not. Just so everyone Yeah, knows. so, you know, a lot of this all goes back to, I back to the social media thing, back to the lack of critical thinking skills. It seems that people are, the increasing number of lack of critical thinking skills. Um, another thing you've seen all in over the 4th of July holiday weekend is this tearing down of statues across the country. What is that about? Well, first of all, history is what it is. 
And What's it's important to know it. Dad, you should not. It's like, probably why actually it? better to learn bad history. It's the supposed bad to things, teach you lessons right, than to hear things not than, to do. Then not to. I mean, I, what good does teaching history about? Look at we're wonderful. Look at all the wonderful things. You need to learn that. Like, hey, look what bad happened back here. Don't do that again. <laughs> Don't do that again. Like printing lots and lots and lots and lots and money. lots and lots of money <laughs> and going into trillions of dollar oh, in debt to have people sit at home and yeah. destroy the economy and those chickens are gonna come home to roost folks um, and the things like you know like they go and they attack i mean the first of all they're desecrating um veteran memorials which is just i'm sorry what is that about this is more just about destruction of property than any logical attack the one that was like okay you've now proven my point rochester new york they tore down a statue of frederick Douglass. Frederick Doug Douglass was, was an escaped slave who fought. He was, he was a abolitionist in New York. So naturally wow. you should go tear his statue down. But this is the problem. I don't know if the younger, I don't know if there's like, are we, there was a political cartoon in the Union Leader about, you know, they tore down the statue of Fra Fra Frederick Douglass and the, there's older people standing there saying, but he was an abolitionist. And the young person said, well, what's an abolitionist? Right. And I was like, ah. God, what, what, what are we coming to? Well, you know, maybe we are just in in those cycles where it's 50 to 75 years. We need a kind of, maybe it's every 100 years. I don't know. I hope we're not, you know. Or it's idiocracy and we're actually living the movie. I mean, um, we are. So your only defense against that is once again, keep your eyes on your own plate, mind yep. your own business, take care of you and yours. Yep. And always keep your eye on the ball. Yep. Always know, always think, always follow the money, always keep your eye on the ball, don't get so sidetracked, don't get caught up in the mess. Um, speaking of messes and <laughs> local uh, New Hampshire, a little like, whoo! So, uh, G. Lane uh, Maxwell apparently who? was living in Bradford, New Hampshire. Who, who knew? knew? Isn't that, it was just kind of crazy. That's, that's and, very weird. It'll be interesting to see, um, you know somebody will tell, there'll be an in, uh, they'll definitely they'll be I mean, an interview she, or something. If she survives. When she, until she commit, you know, I don't know when her scheduled suicide is. Um, but <laughs> as long as, I have a feeling. Well, I heard she has dead, she has a well, dead dead man switch, which is basically if, she dies, if you have, yeah. she has videos. And if she dies in suspicious somebody else circumstances, this will um, get released. And I think, I hope that's true because I think that's probably the only way we're going to well, get to know, the bottom of that And I do story. think, I mean, I think the first, Honestly, if I, you know, this is just speculation, gossip, rumor, all that stuff. I think uh, the first hit's going to be Prince Andrew. I mean, I, don't I know saw what he was thinking I when he went on that interview. There was a that little was clip. Um, they, they, they went to the girl. I can't think of her name, I'm, which is unfortunate that I can't remember her name. Um, the one who made the accusations, who said she was underage and being, um, set, you know, trafficked out to him. Um, they asked her if she thinks that he should be concerned and she just smiled and she said, Oh, he should be very concerned. <laughs> um, so there's that, that it's going to blow up. It's going to be, um, I mean, it's going to be all consumed. It is a, I watched the documentary on Epstein. He is a crazy, disgusting example of a human being. I mean, she is no better because she, in a, not only tolerated it, she actually actively participated in procuring these underage girls. Yeah, it'll definitely be and, and salacious I don't know, I and it'll probably be the soap opera that'll keep us all busy when Maybe. we get locked down right. towards <laughs> the elections in November. But um, in the meanwhile, we also I was have also, a... Uh, um, Trump is coming on Saturday. I, oh, I, is it Saturday? Yeah, um, Saturday he's going to... Um, it's not PUZ Air Force Base. It's whatever it's called now. PUZ Trade um, Port. Yeah, the, He's going out that way. It's in Portsmouth. Uh, the people in Portsmouth are all... all what? Because you know, you but, go it's, to, but it's not going to be in downtown no, Portsmouth. It's, it's out on the it's, field. Right. They're flying in. They, Everyone they're who's right. going there is going there voluntarily. Right. And they they're, choose to they're be there. They're handing they out masks. They got hand sanitizer. Entering at their own risk. So if you're in Portsmouth and you don't like Trump, and then you don't go just there. Don't go. It's then go not downtown and have a bagel at some place. <laughs> you know, like seriously, there is no. There's no reason to get And I think it's hysterical or, that there's you know, like this whole concerted effort because this happened, I guess, out in the Tulsa one. Um, and maybe, I don't know, was there a crowd for the Mount Rushmore thing? Whatever. Um, 
So there's this whole energy to, for people to subscribe, uh, sign up for tickets, be, knowing they're not going. And aha, we're going to throw the numbers off. And I'm like, but you know that's not how it works. They're still going to let in. <laughs> I mean, if the if the space people can hold eight thousand right? people, they're going to let eight thousand people in. They don't care if they're if fifty thousand people signed up for tickets. And those types of tac- tactics, they only work once. Like they, even if you do it again, everybody knows you're doing it, right. so it doesn't mean anything. It's just so. And there's so also, much bizarre. It's also there's, why. Are we at this petty level of stuff? I will tell you why. Because government is too big. Mm. That is why everyone is butthurt about stuff. <laughs> it genuinely is. Mm. Everyone has a vested interest because everyone has a vested interest, right? Like everyone's like, you have to think like me. And that is the opposite of freedom. We should yeah. just be like, everyone, you do you. you do- I got yelled at for doing that. I said, I'll do me, you do you, let them do them. And they were like, I can't believe you just said that because it was about masks. It was about the state reps at the state house not wearing masks up in a corner. And I said, you know, how about you do you? Like, you definitely, if you want to wear a mask, I'll do me and they'll do that. And apparently that was a terrible thing to say. I'm a cold, heartless person. And I was like, no, I'm just saying this is how life should work. Somebody asked me recently, um, ran into neighbors, you know, people who live literally in very close proximity to my house, ran into them at a, um, a local business and they said, oh, are you an under, are you an independent? And I said, no, I'm a Republican. And he was like, oh, and then the person, the third person said, no, no, you like her, this and that. She's like, that's so nice. And I said, he goes, well, what do you believe in? And I go in a nutshell, how about this? You live your life. I'll live my life. He can live his life. And as long as we don't interfere with each other's lives, everybody's happy. Right. How about we go back to that concept? What I do in my backyard, as long as it's not bothering my neighbors, shouldn't bother anybody else. Stop. And, and here's, here's one, right? Because, uh, you know, no one wants to suddenly address your body, your choice, mm-hmm. right? So I'm like, you wear a mask if you want to wear a mask. Definitely. If you don't want to wear a mask, don't wear a mask. It's that simple. And anyone who's making it more complex than that uh, is, it's virtue is being, signaling. yeah, it's, I don't it's care. being I, it manipulated. Really is. I there think. are some people who should legitimately probably be wearing masks. There Wear are masks. Also, and if you're high risk, probably not go be out crimes. and about and, and take the extra precautions. But I am a healthy individual who worked really, really hard. hard to get <laughs> here. And I'm like, the masks make me feel sick. Masks really bother my psoriasis. I, mean, I don't want to make excuses just for myself, but they really do. Uh, there is a negative impact. But it impact. is also like your and breath I, is your life yeah. force, right? Like it's literally your breathing. And and I know that, I mean, this will make everyone mad, but you know, it's like, I can't breathe when I wear yeah. that mask. And I'm like, why, why do, do, why is what I'm doing have anything to do with you? Right. You do you. I do. Me. And keep out of my space. Everybody keep out of my freaking space. You know. But that should have been a rule before I saw COVID. a really cute photo from uh, uh, over the weekend, and we were all standing six or more feet apart, and I was like, libertarian, social distancing so since forever. Yeah. <laughs> all the introverts love this. They've been right? preparing their whole lives for this. Um, it looks like we're just about out of time. Um, make sure you get out there, enjoy the weather. If you're going to the Trump rally in Portsmouth on Saturday, have a good time. I think I've done it twice. I'm, I don't need to go and stand in the heat and do it again. Um, it'll be interesting to watch, though. It'll be interesting to watch the protests. Um, we'll be back next week again and another glorious summer day. And um, if you have any ideas, send them to us at manchtalk at gmail.com or sign up to follow us on YouTube, whatever works for you. That's all we got. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.